Hi, this is lesson 3.6. We have what we call antiderivatives. We're going to start going backwards from where we've been before. We're going to give you a derivative, and then you're, you're going to tell me what the antiderivative is, which is going back to the original function. So try these warm-up problems. Do those quickly. Pause this, and then come back to me. So I think you find out that each one of these have the same derivative. In fact, if I gave you f of x is equal to x cubed plus 2,000, f prime would be 3x squared as well. So it doesn't matter what this constant is. This brings me down to the derivative, which is 3x squared. So let's ask the question, what if we want to go backwards? What if we want to anti-differentiate? And another word for that is integrate given that f prime is equal to 3x squared. To find f, I think you understand that we'll put the 3 up top and we're going to end up with x cubed. Now, we do not know what this constant is unless if they give us an, uh, a specific value on the curve. So we say then we go plus c. So the antiderivative has to include this plus c. And so we write this with this curly thing, which stands indirectly for an, uh, an S, but it is a sum, and we'll get to that later. But we have 3x squared dx. This is the differential inside here. The dx, we'll talk about that later too, but the antiderivative of that would be x cubed plus c. So here we have some things about the symbol. It's called the integral symbol and tells us to integrate or anti-differentiate the expression which follows it. This expression right here is called the integrand. The dx, it doesn't affect our process, but it is very important to our process and we do need it, uh, so don't leave it out. And then c is called the constant of integration. We need that too when we take the antiderivative and we don't have specific limits on here. So let's go through some rules for integration. Now the nice thing too is when you do take these antiderivatives is that you can always check them by taking the derivative and getting back to where you started from. So let's do a power rule here. If we have x to some power n, we're going to take and raise that to the one higher power and instead of multiplying something out in front, we gotta get rid of it somehow so we're gonna divide by n plus one and then we don't forget the plus c. So let's do an example down here for number four. I'm going to go ahead and apply this rule. So it says take my x, raise it to the one higher power, which would be four, and then I'm gonna divide by that same four, and I don't forget my constant of integration. Now if you don't believe this, you can go ahead and check your answer by taking the derivative of x to the fourth over four plus c, and you should get back to our integrand. So if I do that, I take the four out in front, the fours will cancel, so it's four x raised to the one less power over four, derivative of c is c, I'm sorry, zero, so these fours cancel, yes, I get back to that x cubed, so it does work. So you can always check your answers by taking the derivative of what you ended up with and see if you get back to the integrand. Constant rule, what's the derivative of 3x? Well, that's gonna be three. So if I take the antiderivative of three, I should get 3x and then plus the c. That's what the constant rule tells me. Any constant, dx, is going to be kx plus c. Scalar multiple, I always say that this is just a number that goes along for the ride, so it doesn't matter if it's inside or if it's outside. The key to this, though, is that it's only a constant. You can never take out a variable and put it out in front. Later on, we'll do some balancing. You can't balance a variable either, so be very careful with that. Then the sum rule is that the integral of the sum is equal to the sum of the individual pieces, integration of those. Then our trig rules. Well, let's think if we can figure some of these things out. First of all, I like to write this. If I have the sine of x, the derivative is the cosine of x. The derivative of the cosine of x is negative sine of x. And the derivative of that would be negative cosine of x. The derivative of that would be back to the sine of x. Now this is a lot of 
long-winded stuff, but what happens is that if I, if I am given a value, if I go down, I think that I'm taking the derivative. If I go up, I'm thinking I'm taking the antiderivative. So if I have the cosine here and I go up, the antiderivative is simply going to be the sine of x. Don't forget the constant of integration. And if I take the antiderivative of sine, I can go up here and I get the negative cosine of x plus c. And I think that, well, how I memorize it is I just memorize these two. And I know that if I go up from the cosine, I'm going to get positive sine. If I go down, it's got to be negative. It's got to be something different. And I can talk about that more in class, but that's where we're at. The antiderivative is secant squared. I hope you understand that that's the tangent because the derivative of the tangent is the secant squared. Cosecant squared, the difference with this one is that I don't have the negative symbol, so I need to include that in my answer. So it's going to be negative cotangent of x plus c. Secant tangent, antiderivative of that is the secant. And then the cosecant cotangent, I should have a negative with that, so that's going to have to be a negative on the cosecant function. I am going to highly recommend that you race ahead a little bit on these and see if you can figure out them for yourselves and then come back and check to see if you are correct or not. If you get stuck, that's okay. We'll show you how to do them, but like I said, race ahead and try to figure some of these out. So number five, I hope that you found that this was 2x plus c. Yes, if I take the derivative of this, I'm going to get 2. Back to there. This one, I just have my pieces, so I do one piece at a time. So it's t to the fifth, raise it to the one higher power, divide by that same number, and then plus 2t plus c. Don't forget the c. Now for number seven, I have a two out in front of this first term. That's not going to affect me too much. Uh, I'm just going to leave it there. It goes along for the ride. So I'm going to go 2y, raise it to the one higher power, which is the three, and divide by that three. Plus 4y, raise it to the one higher power, divide by that number, and then plus y plus c. Clean this up a little bit. This is equal to two. This one really doesn't clean up but this one does, and we get those values there. Number eight, oh, boom, all of a sudden we're into it. Well, we do similar to what we did when we had derivatives. We rewrite the exponents. So if I take this one, this is going to be the integral of 3x to the negative 2 minus x to the negative 1 half. Cover them all up and multiply them by dx. Now, if I do each one of these individually, the hardest problem is how do I add 1? So if I go 3x, what's 1 added to this negative 2? That would be negative 1. Divide by that negative 1. Then this one would be 1 half divided by 1 half. Whenever you divide by these fractions, you're probably going to reciprocate them and put them into the numerator. So we clean this up, and this would be negative 3 over x. And then this 2 comes up, so it's 2 square root of x plus c. How can I check my answer? Well, I can check my answer for this by taking the derivative and making sure I get back there. I'll say that a few times. So you can always check your answers by working backwards. Now, number 9. If you tried number 9, you may have tried to do it piece by piece. Can't do that. And so what you might want to do is simplify this as we did before. Do the rabbit method here. So if I take square root of x divided by x squared, I'm going to end up with x to the negative 3 halves. And then 1 over x squared is x to the negative 2. I need my, integrand, my integration symbol, and I need my dx. Cover them up and multiply by dx. And so this is equal to x raised to the 1 higher would be negative 1 half. Divide by 1 half, I think you might get this now, it means multiply by 2, in this case negative, and then plus x raised to the negative 1 divided by negative 1 plus c. I don't like negative ex exponents in my answer, so I'm going to get this 
right here. If you don't understand how I got x to the negative 3 halves, what I did was I rewrote this one as x to the 1 half divided by x squared, which means that I subtract the exponents when I have that uh, quotient there. Then I can subtract the exponents. 1 half minus 2 is 3 halves. And I should put a negative on that too. So that's where I'm getting that value right there. I sure hope you tried number 10 before we started should be able to do this. This is equal to the antiderivative of the cosine is the sine. So the 2 goes along for the ride, sine of theta, and the antiderivative of the negative sine is the cosine. So I'm going to go plus 3 cosine of theta plus c. Just have to sort out those negative signs a little bit. Uh, you'll get used to it and you'll be able to figure it out. Number 11. Number 11 looks like a rewrite to me. So if I go the integral of the cosine over the sine times 1 over the sine, I think you can start seeing what I'm doing here. This cosecant is cotangent. And this one would be the cosecant dx. The antiderivative of this, what is that again? There it is, right there. Yes, I have it, which is equal to the opposite of the cosecant of x plus c. Sometimes we have what we call an initial condition. That makes it possible that we can find c. Oh, nice. We can lock this baby in. We did this with the graphs before where we made sure that you went through a particular point. This would be a family of curves, which you end up for the solution, but then we want to lock in on this particular one that has a value that we know. So example number 12. If I, f prime is equal to x to the negative 3, and I do know an initial condition, they want me to find f of x so that c is not there anymore. I get a specific value for it. So I want to find the antiderivative of x to the negative 3 dx, we take the antiderivative of this, so I raise it to the one higher power, which would be negative 2, be careful with that, divide by negative 2, and I'm going to go plus c. So this is my f of x. So f of x is equal to, so this is equal to negative 1 over 2x squared plus c. That's my f of x. Now they do tell me an initial condition. They tell me when I have 1, so now you just take the 1 and plug it in for x and set it equal to 3 halves. So I have 3 halves is equal to negative 1 over 2 plus c. So the 3 halves into here and the 1 into there. Solving this, c is equal to, add 1 half, it's going to be a 2. So now I don't just leave it right here what f of x is. So I have f of x is equal to negative 1 over 2x squared plus 2. Okay, let's try this next one, example number 13. So we have position, function, velocity, and then acceleration. So if we want to go backwards, we go in this order here. So here I have velocity. If I want to find velocity given this acceleration, I have an initial condition for the velocity and I have an initial condition for the position function. Let's do this one at a time. So if I take the velocity, it's going to be the antiderivative of a of t, which is 4t minus 3 dt. So when I take the antiderivative, this will be 4t squared over 2, so 2t squared minus 3t, and don't forget your plus c. That's your v of t. Now this gives me a family of functions, however this one locks it in. I find the particular solution with that. So I can take 6 is equal to 2, and I'm going to plug in the 1 for t, so it's 2 minus 3 plus c. This is a negative 1, bring it over, it will be c is equal to 7. And don't forget to write now, this is what we call, so now we have two things here. 
One is the general solution with the plus C, and the other one is the particular solution, which we found the value of C. Those are term that's terminology that you do need to know. General solution and particular solution. Now we want to find the position function, so we use this particular solution over here. So we take the antiderivative of 2t squared minus 3t plus 7, and I need a dt on that. So this is going to be equal to 2 thirds t to the third minus 3t squared all over 2 plus 7t. And don't forget plus C. Now I can take my initial condition and plug it in here for the different items that I do need. So this would be 5 is equal to 16 thirds minus plug in 2 into here. And I'm going to get a 4, so that would be leaving me with uh, 6. And then plug in a 2 there, and I'm going to get a 14 plus C. So I get C is equal to negative 25 over 3 if I did that right. And then looking at this, this is the general solution here. I need the particular solution, so I'm going to write that out. So then this here is my particular solution with my constant of integration in there. So I got example 14. Given that on Earth, the acceleration of an object due to gravity is approximately negative 32 feet per second squared. Negative indicates downward. Develop the equation for the velocity of the object. So the velocity is going to be the antiderivative of the acceleration. So if I do this, this is negative 32t plus c. And that's my general solution. Now, it does tell me that at time zero, V naught, or V zero, is my initial velocity. So V naught is equal to negative 32 times zero plus C. So C is V naught. So I write this out, particular solution, negative 32T plus V naught. Now, if I go down here for the position function, this is going to be the antiderivative of negative 32t plus v naught dt. Take the antiderivative. So this would be negative 32t squared over 2 plus v naught t plus some value c. Well, this is going to turn out to be exactly the same as the last one. This will be my constant of integration. So this is my s of t. We've seen this since algebra 2 trig probably, s of t is equal to negative 16 t squared plus v naught t plus s naught. This is your initial height. v naught is your initial velocity. This is your position at any certain time. And finally, these two equations that we just found may be used for any motion affected only by the Earth's gravity. All right, that's a wrap up of this unit. I hope you enjoyed this. Particular solutions and antiderivatives. Fun, fun, fun. I love this stuff. Have a great day.